<laughs> hey guys, I'm trying to keep it cleanish. Um. Okay, listen. I don't know what I'm going to do. All right, I'm going to bring up the next guy who does not want to keep it clean, and I know I can see it. It's written all over his face. He doesn't even look happy right now. And I know the material he's going to do tonight. I've heard it. It's Paul Clemente, everybody. Sushi 
handled by real Asians. They even keep that in there. Walmart, on the other hand, has like this weird shoe graveyard. Do you ever see that? You guys ever spent time in the shoe department in, in Walmart? <laughs> Looking at some of you guys, you can't tell me no. <laughs> it's really weird. Like when people buy new shoes at Walmart, they just leave their old shoes behind. <laughs> what happens in that shoe department? You live your whole life with these shoes. You buy new shoes, you just leave them there. So you see there, you just see a bunch of old rich shoes and tissue paper. That's not a good look. Wegmans also has free beer samples on the weekend. You guys know that? You go to Wegmans on the weekend, they're giving out free beer. At Walmart on the weekend, you go and get an oil change. I saw a guy sleeping in a tire in the auto department. Just passed out like he was in the lazy river, just out cold. And I wasn't really sure if he was on the clock or not, but I had a feeling it wouldn't matter. His productivity would have been exactly, exactly the same. Wegmans has these awesome five dollar meals. They are perfect meals for a human, for for an adult. And these nice little five dollar packages. And like, if you go there enough, the older ladies will let you call them mom. You can go and be like, can you, they'll heat it up for you. And it's like a dinner. If you're not responsible and you don't know how to cook, they will make you a dinner. That is awesome. And it's only $5. It's good food. On the other hand, Walmart has rows of shirts telling everyone how much you hate Mondays. So one of my favorite things, also about Wegmans, my kids are older and I don't really take advantage of this too often, is that W Kids. You guys ever go to Walmart and drop your, or Wegmans and drop your kids off? You guys ever do that? Just drop your kids off, it's a nice like, little playground thing. It's really nice, if you ever get a shot, you can drop them off. And they ask for your driver's license, it's kind of like a collateral. And that's weird too, like if you're crazy enough to leave your kids at Wegmans, you don't care how legal it is to drive the freedom. You're just going to leave your license there. It's a tough crowd than I do. It's a tough one. That's all right. That's all right. I'm keeping it clean. He's in the clean. Come on, why not? Is that You're good. I'm good? Thank you. Thank you for checking. We can talk later. That's great. So, the best thing about the kid drop off at Wegmans is that they take good care of your kids. You go in there, they have these gallons of disinfectant. They have every color marker in the rainbow possible. They have a nice, they really do, it's really nice there. So you got a bunch of markers there, you got a nice DVD player, you can leave your kids there, and you have time to shop. Did anyone know that Wegmans sells eight different kinds of mustard? I had no idea until I had all this free time on my hands. <laughs> it's out. awesome. I bought all eight. If you want to come over, I got all kinds of mustard. Uh, I can pick up the Anything you can do. Everything. Everything you can ask for. And so when I come back, unfortunately, my shopping is <laughs> I have to get my kids again. And I'm caught up. My kids are sitting on a table with these two other kids, and they're having this great time. And they're coloring with these other kids, they're not staring at a TV, and they're having this like moment. And I found myself staring at them, just real sweet. And I guess the mom comes up behind me, and she's looking at him too. And she's caught up in the moment. And we're kind of staring off looking at each other. And she nudges me, and she goes, Which ones are yours? And being a comedian, I go, Well, I haven't decided yet. And it took me a half hour to get my kids back. <laughs> I had to talk to two different managers, but eventually I got them back. And you know what, Wegmans wasn't wrong. They, were, they did the right thing. I'm not mad at them. I'm not mad at them. They did the right thing. They did the right thing. So I think I consider myself a good parent. I do. Kids are good. My kids are good. Yeah.
Well, nothing I ever met my kids. I can't have it for validation. Huh? But I think I'm a good parent. Uh, they generally make good decisions. I think they're going to be good human beings. And that's really tough with me as a dad because <laughs> I don't make it easy. Like when you have your first kids, and you were just through two years ago, right? They're this like little bundle of miracles. Four years ago? Okay. They had a lot of kids. Man, you're like franchising. Young franchise. I don't want to. Good. Keep it going. I don't want to. <laughs> you don't want to? I want my life back. Go sit on the microwave. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I do. Just stick the fork in there and stick my knife. <laughs> It's just going to be me and Andy talking for the rest of this night, I think, if you guys are doing that. Hey, what the kids doing? <laughs> so these kids are these little bundle of miracles. They're the reason you get up in the morning. They're the reason you're exercising. They're the reason you're going to stop drinking. They are the reason. They're the alpha and the omega of your life. They are the reason you do everything when you first have a kid. But how long does that last? Four days. Four days for Andy. Time. About a year, I think. What? And it's not that you don't care. It's the second fire. All the time. They're this resource black hole that comes into your life and they take everything. And they get interweaved into every single fabric of your life. And it never ends. And even though my kids are older, they still need things from me. They still constantly ask from me. And you know what? I don't think it's ever gonna stop. It's never gonna stop. And so, I try my best to keep myself entertained. Cause you don't like to be, pretend you're interested in Pokemon so long. You really can't. It just wears you down. I'm sorry if that's a reality for some you guys. You can only pretend you care about a Charizard and a Snorlax, Snorlax, just for so long. So, I ended up, when I was younger, I ended up, or when my kids were younger, I ended up telling them a lot of weird things just to kind of keep myself entertained and kind of teach them some lessons. I used to tell them that if they didn't go to sleep at night, the sun wouldn't rise in the morning. If they didn't sleep, they were responsible for the sun setting and uh, rising every single day. And that's such a happy thing to put on a kid. Why don't you tell anybody that? The entire Earth's energy source, their entire heat source, what the planet runs on is on their responsibility and whether they want me to reach midnight moon one more time or not. Like, can you imagine a guy sitting outside like a cafe in Paris? Smoking a cigarette and going like the font de Polanquer. <laughs> they wouldn't speak French English just for this joke, Andy. It's Paul Skid again. That's right. I also used to tell them the smoke detectors in the house were cameras. I don't know if they still believe it or not, but I'm not going to risk it. I'm going to let that one slide. I tell them shots don't hurt when I take them to the doctor. Shots do hurt. They hurt a lot. I had to give blood last year and they had to give me juice and tell me I was brave for an hour before I calmed down. Shots hurt. Rumble strips? They're not for blind drivers. They're for me, sir. My hot dogs? They're not world famous. Just try them and pause it. And you don't have a good eye. You just suck at T-ball. <laughs> I, mean, I don't have a bad knee. I'm just tired of getting beat at hockey in the driveway. I really am. I'm, I'm fine. I'm just like me. And there is no french fry tax. I made it up. I just wanted your french fries. And I don't think I've ever heard the dog fart, ever. <laughs> All the farts they've been made. Every single one of them have been made. My poor dog. And I'm not tired. I'm just drunk. I just need a little space. And you're adopted. No, I don't tell them that. Therapy's too expensive. 
Can you imagine? I can't even imagine my kids in therapy after all stuff I've done to them. Like I can imagine them telling their therapist, like, what's one thing you would tell your father if he was alive? You go, oh, I'm sorry I cremated you, Dad. I really thought you were dead. <laughs> oh man. I used to tell my kids that when there was an ice cream truck and they'd hear the music, they'd get all excited. And I think if they were really good or really bad, if they were good, we'd get ice cream. If they were bad, I'd be like, all right, listen. No, really listen. No, that's just an ambulance playing music for sick kids. Next time, next time. And what's, uh, what's the most beautiful thing your kid does when they're first born? Anyone want to weigh in? Out of all the things that they do, Taken away for a couple hours. Gets taken away for a couple hours. Anything? What's the best thing that the kids do? You think? Sleep Sleep's good. I think we have some experienced parents here. They're going to be really anxious. First word. When your kid says their first word, my kid's first words were dad because I'm awesome. But after a while, that wears off in a couple months. And I used to tell my kids they only have a hundred words to use for the entire day or their tongue would fall out of their heads. So when they come up and they'd start talking and they'd start freaking out about something, I'd start counting down from 10 to 60 down to 100, I'd just go nine, eight, seven, and then they'd freak out and then go. Or sometimes they'd come up to me and be like, Dad, how, much, how many more words do I have? And I'd say, well, seven less than you had before. That was seven, seven, word seven, seven. But it's weird how that turns into, you know, when you're young and they want to talk to you all the time. And they need your attention. And then when they get older, like my daughter is 12 and she hides up in her bedroom and everything's too cool for her anymore. And one day she goes, can we go to Starbucks? And like I said, I'm... She's up in her room all the time. I tripped over my shoes. She could have told me she was going to her dealer's house, and I would have tripped over my shoes to get her there, just to spend some time with her. So we go to Starbucks, and she wants a uniform frappuccino. And she orders her drink, the uniform frappuccino. I get a venti caramel macchiato. Let's see, we have some fans of the caramel macchiato. And they ask me what your name is on the cup. And I said, Dad. Because I'm cool like that. I said, Dad. And she goes, really? And I'm like, yeah. So she gets her drink, and I'm sitting down with her. And then the barista at Starbucks, he looks me, my drinks up, and he goes, Dad? Dad? I'm looking for Dad. Anyone? <laughs> Anyone seen Dad? <laughs> Dad? Uh. All right, that's it for me, guys. Thank you. Let's give it up for Paul Clemente. Everybody.